Okay. Welcome everyone to uh, Protect PT's Lunch and Learn. I'm Jillian Graber, Executive Director of Protect PT, and we're here today with our staff. Uh, and this is a special Lunch and Learn because tomorrow is our seventh anniversary. <laughs> so uh, that is the seventh anniversary of us officially becoming a nonprofit April 27th. Uh, so we like to celebrate every year, and uh, since our Lunch and Learn is Tuesday, we're going to celebrate today a little bit, um, and so I encourage folks to put um, comments in the chat, um, and if you're watching this live on YouTube, we're also going to go ahead and um, try to stream it on Facebook, share it with Facebook, so um, either way, if you're tuning in, you should be able to um, you know, join us hopefully and interact with us uh, like we do with the other uh, lunch and learns. And so today we're going to talk a lot about how what we've accomplished uh, in the last seven years. And uh, we are very excited because just uh, this weekend, <laughs> we moved to a new space. So we're just still like getting unpacked and everything. Um, and we're, we're gonna um, share with you some events that are coming up as well. And ho hopefully, you can come and visit us um, on April 7th, or I'm sorry, May 7th. <laughs> um, and so we're going to start by talking a little bit about some of the projects that we've worked on um, most recently. And um, so go ahead, Mary, if you want to go ahead to the next screen. Um, Mary is our, our tech in the background. So thank you so much, Mary, for running tech for us. Um, and I was actually recently <laughs> asked about this at a local hearing. We participate in local hearings uh, really to for the purpose of uh, holding gas operators accountable um, to the permits that they submit, not only to the local folks, but also to uh, the DEP. And this, this is a great <laughs> example of that. We were outside the Department of Environmental Protection asking them for to not permit a well pad that's located actually really close to my house, but within a mile of over 3,000 households in Penn Township. Um, and it was, it's, it was a really big event. We got some good, good coverage and news. And those permits to this day, this was last October, are still pending. So that makes me very happy. <laughs> um, and so we're con continuing to work on that. Um, go ahead to the next slide. Uh, so, you know, engaging the media is some uh, really big part of what we do um, here at Protect PT, trying to advocate for folks' uh, environmental and legal rights to, uh, in particular, our, in, our environmental rights amendment, Article 1, Section 27 of our, our Pennsylvania Constitution. Um, so if you go to the next slide, Mary, um, this, is, this is a great example of some of the things that folks can do in their own community. Uh, for um, advocating for their own protection. So um, if you'll go ahead and go to number three, Mary. Yep, thank you. Here we are outside the DEP again. Um, we had some speakers that day. One of our board members, um, Lois, spoke about um, fracking and how it's affected her family. And Dr. Larry Iyer, who's here, uh, pictured on the, the left-hand side of this picture, he is actually my neighbor <laughs> and, um, and a supporter of Protect PT. Um, uh, and he spoke about really how this well pad was going to impact our community. Um, and, uh, you know, the chemicals that uh, were going to be produced as a, as a result of, of this particular pad being built in, in our really residential neighborhood. Um, so again, just really highlighting the risks, the human impacts of fracking around uh, densely populated areas in our, in our community. Um, and so if you go to the next slide, another thing that we work on is... Um, monitoring. So uh, this is a great educational opportunity for us to educate the community on things like radon. Uh, this year was our first radon monitoring um, air program. So we have uh, this new program that just started last September, and we've monitored 
Oh gosh, um, we've monitored uh, lots of homes in Penn Trafford. I want to say it's about 25 in Penn Trafford and then overall in Allegheny County and Westmoreland County, um, several more homes uh, since we started the program last year. And I would say on average, about 75% of those homes required mitigation. So um, it was a really big, um, important thing to do to really... Um, make people aware, number one, of radon and how it can be impactful to your home. Uh, and, and, and it's just something that naturally occurs. And number two, how to mitigate that so you don't get things like lung cancer, which is uh, radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. So go ahead and to the next screen, Mary. So it's really easy to do in-home testing. And if you're watching this and you're within, I would say about um, an hour from our office, um, you can go ahead and sign up for radon monitoring. Um, this is a, a great way for you to make sure that your home is as safe as it possibly can be for your family inside your home. And uh, there's the number right there. You can also visit our webpage online and we will run anywhere from a seven to 90 day study depending on um, your current conditions of your home and, 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 you know, just a lot of other factors. But we have an environmental science team and they're working on radon monitoring in homes right now. Um, and so if you go ahead to the next screen, yes. Uh, we also do other types of air monitoring with our purple airs, which is um, locate, which is uh, look, uh, an example of here, as well as our VOC monitors, which we just started doing last year um, with the AirVis VOCs. And these are important um, elements to our monitoring program because we can actually see in real time, thanks to our partners at the Environmental Health Project, uh, we can see in real time the, um, the air impacts from different type of infrastructure. Um, this year, I will say we're going to be um, working on three really specific sites. Uh, one, the Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill, which we've been working on for the last two years. Um, number two, we're going to be working uh, around the Manesson Coke Works, which is a brand, uh, a new, uh, well, it's not a new facility, but it just reopened this year, also very close to Ross Draver Township. And then three, we're working around the plumb injection well. Um, so those are the three key hotspots that we're monitoring right now for air emissions, including VOCs and PM 2.5. So, but that's not to say that we're not doing other things too, because you can go to other, you can, uh, if you're not living in one of those areas, but you have a pollution event, we want to talk to you as well. So again, um, contact our monitoring um, our, our monitoring folks uh, with environmental science. This is another type of monitoring we do for noise, it's pretty unique to our organization, uh, monitoring for noise around shale gas, and that's actually what it looks like, the, the monitor. Um, and we can um, talk about impacts. Mary, if you go to the next slide. Um, uh, Mary, do you want to just give a brief description about the environmental monitoring tool that we have here that not only works with our monitoring, but also independently?
you can, you know, just kind of use your same information that you reported to us to make that report. And it's just super, super easy. Um, this is something you can use on the go. If you're on your phone, you can use it on your phone. Um, you can also use it from a desktop or any other type of device because it's just this um, responsive link. So any device that you have connected to the internet, you can use this to make a report at any time. Great. Yeah. And so you get to that and it is a little cut off at the bottom, but it's just report.protectpt.org. Um, and if you go ahead to the next screen. Um, yes. Okay, great. Um, Mary, do you want to kind of talk a little bit about this reporting? At, and just to let you guys know, I, I should have introduced everyone. <laughs> that was my bad. Uh, this is Mary Obringer. She is our outreach manager. So any type of email that you get, Mary is in, in charge of making sure those emails go out, um, helping with social media. And we're going to go ahead and um, talk about this. And then we're going to introduce next Jess after and she's going to talk about her role at Protect PT. Um, so go ahead, Mary, and why don't you go give us a little bit of information on um, the mobile app? Sure. Yeah. So we have a few guides that go with the mobile app. So um, we have some, some documents and these can be also be found on the website. We're getting everything up on the website. Uh, but this just kind of um, these are two examples. Um, this just kind of guides you through, you know, what is the app? What is it doing? Um, how can you use it? We also have a guide on how you can make a little shortcut for your home screen. So if you just want to make it super easy, you don't want to remember that link and you just want to have it on your home screen, you can do that. Um, so we have these different, you know, documents that just kind of help with that. And so if you want access to any of those, you can feel free to reach out to me directly. My email is just my first name, Mary, M-A-R-Y, at protectpt.org. So um, any documents or, you know, anything like that, I'm happy to send your way if, if you're not finding it on the website. Um, but we are, you know, trying to keep the website updated to make these available to you all. Great. And um, Mary, were you going to talk about, or was this Jess that you was going to talk about the next screen, the, the managing project? Oh, okay. All right. We're going to do a little flip-flop here. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, we're going to have um, Jim talking next about the ordinance. Jim is one of the newest members of our team. He started uh, in December of last year, and he is our um, community uh, community advocate and uh, go ahead Jim and talk about a little bit what you have been working on. Sure my name is Jim Serrano and as Jillian said I am the new uh, community advocate. I have um, in the past had my own private law practice for about 30 years and then I uh, retired from that and uh, came over here. So what the first thing that Jillian actually asked me to do was to update um, the Penn Township Ordinance. Uh, that is a zoning ordinance. And specifically, it is the ordinance that pertains to oil and gas development in Penn Township. And there is a state law that regulates the oil and gas industry. And it was enacted at the very beginning of the oil and gas, shale gas development. And it was designed, the ordinance was, to enable uh, operators, that is uh, oil and gas drillers and uh, producers, to put their wells virtually anywhere, uh, in residential neighborhoods, right next to school buildings, next to hospitals, pretty much wherever they wanted to. Many people were uh, unhappy about that because oil and gas development comes with a number of significant risks uh, to health, to safety, uh, and to, to various other things. And that's because it's a heavy industrial use. So there's a lot of noise associated with it. There is a lot of um, lighting associated with it. It's basically a factory. Uh, and associated with that factory are very large increases in truck traffic uh, and the associated diesel emissions with that truck traffic. In addition, because it's an, a, a gas development and natural gas is explosive, uh, there are risks of, uh, of, of explosions because so much water is used in the fracking process. 
over you know, 500 uh, million gallons per well drilled sometimes. Uh, and that water is all treated with particular chemicals that are in fact toxic. Uh, spills uh, are a risk. Uh, discharge of that water onto the ground is a risk. Also contamination of groundwater, wells, et cetera, is a risk uh, with this contaminated water. So one of the things that, one of the first things that people tried to do was to, in order to protect themselves from uh, indiscriminate uh, oil and uh, unconventional gas exploration is to develop local ordinances that restrict the places and the manner in which uh, oil and gas exploration, particularly unconventional gas wells, could be drilled and placed in the community. All communities are zoned and they all have by law uh, different zones in the community for different types of activity. Most have places where industrial activity takes place. Most have all have residential areas, all have business and commercial areas. Um, the point being that the township and the, the community wants to place like things next to other like things so that you don't have a factory next to a school or you don't have um, you know, a commercial district in the middle of a residential development. So the current ordinance is inadequate in that regard. It permits oil and gas drilling within 600 feet of what we call protected structures or homes, schools, offices, uh, anything that has people. Uh, it doesn't control the rate and the amount of truck traffic that can be uh, permitted. It doesn't have adequate protections for air quality discharge. It doesn't have adequate protection for erosion and sedimentation. What we're trying to do is enact a new ordinance that provides for all those things. That ordinance, the way we envision it, has two parts. First part is disclosure. So what we're asking and all we're asking of the uh, oil and gas developers, that is the unconventional uh, frackers, is to tell us what they're going to do. What is their plan? They have to disclose to the community exactly how many trucks they're going to have, how often, how regularly they're going to pass, what those truck routes are going to be, how close they're going to pass schools, those sorts of things. They're also required to disclose their schedule of development, disclose the uh, process by which they're going to try to frack and drill. They're required to disclose how much noise they're going to create in the drilling process, how much light they're going to generate at night uh, that might keep people awake, uh, and where, in fact, they're going to place their well. The second part is protections. So after the disclosure, we are hoping to require uh, them to not place wells within 2,500 feet of any protected structure, a protected structure being a school, a home, an office, any place where people go on a regular basis. Uh, other things that we're looking for in terms of protections are limiting the amount of noise that can be generated by the drilling process. And if in fact there, it is shown that their drilling is going to exceed those decimal levels, then we would require them to take measures to lower the decibel levels. In other words, mute the sound. So that's basically what the ordinance is. And right now we are working to get this in front of the commissioners and to get enough community support that it is passed and enacted into law. This ordinance was put together by researching other local ordinances by reviewing the attorney general's grand jury report, which studied the impacts of unconventional gas drilling in Pennsylvania. That grand jury report generated recommendations for the health and the safety of uh, 
the communities in Pennsylvania as they are impacted by unconventional drilling. We've tried to take the recommendations from that grand jury and put them into this ordinance. So this ordinance is really not anything that is outside of the norm uh, in Western Pennsylvania. And it is drawn from and relies on uh, similar ordinances that are more protective than the current Penn Township ordinance as it pertains to gas and oil. And we're gonna be making a push here in the next couple of weeks to really get this front and center before the commissioners and hope to get a vote on it in the very near future. Great, thank you, Jim. That was a, a really wonderful description of, of some of the legal work that we're doing. Um, we also, I wanna mention, we participate in local hearings like I was talking about earlier. And one of the things that I think is one of my favorite things we're gearing up to do just now um, within the next month is uh, have a new set of interns come in. Um, and uh, Mary <laughs> was in our first intern class uh, here when we first had our first office across the street from where we are now. And that was what, five, well, that office opened about five years ago and we were in our previous office for three. And now we're in this new office, this new beautiful space. Um, and so here is a picture of our first internship class. <laughs> uh, and Mary was there. And then, you know, Mary worked with us uh, while she finished college, right? And then um, afterwards, you were hired right away, Mary. So um, with that, you know, can you tell me a little bit about why your experience um, during the summer led you to want to continue work um, while in school and then ultimately get a full-time job here at Protect PT. For sure. Yeah, thank you. So um, I, so my major was actually in journalism, so it's not a directly nonprofit related, but I had been thinking about it when it came to my internship and I I was really interested in nonprofit work. I decided I didn't really want to go the traditional journalism route. So I started looking at some options. And I remember, I actually remember like our interview. Um, and I remember when you were telling me, I didn't know a lot about the fracking process. And so you were telling me a little bit about this process and how it's using so much water and all these different things. And I just kept thinking, there's something, there's something going on here. Like there's some, this is something I didn't know like pretty much anything about. And that summer, um, there was this book that I was reading, Amity and Prosperity. Um, some of you, you know, may have read this book, and um, it's just, it's just a really excellent book. Um, some really uh, heart wrenching stories of of these families living with fracking and um, being a journalist and and reading a book, you know, written by a journalist about these families. Like there was just so much of a connection there. Um, and just and just seeing how how these stories are playing out and how um, this isn't just you know one time instance for this family. This is this type of thing keeps happening for so many um, that we so many people that we are working with. Um, and so yeah, just like knowing that impact and realizing like this is this is what we're working to address. Like we're trying to help people deal with these direct impacts. Um, that just, that meant a lot to me and I really wanted to continue working with that. And so, yeah, I mean, even now it's like, you know, a few weeks ago, I had a conversation with someone who's surrounded by well pads and, and feels kind of alone and feels, you know, has seen other people maybe moving out or, or different things happening. And, and she, she just kind of felt trapped. And, um, just to know that, that we are here as a resource for the community so that when people feel like they're facing something alone, that they're really not facing something alone, that we're here to help, whether it's through monitoring programs, whether it's through the advocacy or education, like we're, that's, that's the reason that we're here is to try to help people deal with these impacts. Yeah, I thought, I think that's an awesome description, Mary. And, and I think it's really important to tell people stories, you know, um, we hear a lot of stories, uh, and we want to make sure that not only do we tell people stories um, if they want their story told, but also, um, you know, make sure that that doesn't happen to someone else or, or try to um, find ways to educate folks so they don't have as many impacts. Um, in a lot of ways, we can't, you know, we can't uh, 
prevent all the impacts, but what we try to do is arm people with the tools to be able to live through them as best as they possibly can. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think one of the ways that we do that is if you go to the next screen, um, our home resource guide. Um, so this is our home resource guide. We're actually going to have uh, one in May. We're having a, 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 our next meeting in May in Ross Draver Township. They were helping the folks in Ross Draver right now um, prepare for their hearing. They're actually, there's a hearing for a new well pad from an operator that we're very familiar with. Um, so that's the first time that they've actually done anything in Ross Draver. And so, you know, we got frantic calls from, from folks saying, you know, what do we do? How do we deal with this? And so we're helping with the, um, you know, prepare them for the local hearing, but also we're going to do a home resource guide workshop in Ross Draver, and we're going to have them here at our new community um, education center, as well as, um, you know, other, other things that we can present here at our community environmental education center very soon here. Um, but this is a great resource for folks to put on their shelf and, uh, and know that they uh, have a way to find the information they need to protect them themselves and their families. So we go ahead to the next screen. Um, this this is, you know, we were at the library before. <laughs> now we're not going to need to depend on the library because we have our own space, which is really, really awesome. <laughs> and then um, if you go ahead to the next screen, Mary actually put up for us the next event, which is May 21st. Um, and uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about is um, some, some branding and updates, as well as maybe some mentorship. Um, we, we talked a little bit about the mentorship we did with, um, mm -hmm. with Ross Draver. But um, tell Mary, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the new space? Yeah, so as you all can see in these pictures here, we um, we have some construction that happened. They are actually done now, and we are actually, most of us are physically sitting in a new space, so yay. Um, yeah, so we have um, we have this had this opportunity to um, expand our space and open, um, one of our suites has this community environmental education center, and so we're actually having an open house May 7th, so you'll see a slide about that. Um, but this center that Jillian was talking about a little bit, um, we're going to have classes like the home resource guide workshop. We're going to be able to have workshops like that in here. We're going to be able to have other classes on topics like radon or monitoring or um, how to look up permits or or even like kids, kids workshops and stuff. Um, so it, it really will open us up to be able to have a lot more events in here without um, without having to, to worry about, you know, different spaces or like what works in different spaces. This space is big, it's open, it's available to us anytime. And so um, we can just have, yeah, different programs here for people. And um, yeah, so uh, I'll go ahead to the next screen with the open house information. So May 7th from 11 to 4, we're going to have a grand opening to celebrate the center. So please come out and join us. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a taco bar raffles. Um, we, we have some live music and uh, yeah, some other fun things happening here. So it's just, you know, going to be uh, really, really open and relaxed and, and bring your family and just come out for some fun. Um, yeah. And we'd love to show you around the new space. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. And go ahead to the next screen. Um, we're going to introduce Jess Ness next, but before we do that, I just want to mention too, uh, you might see in, in our background right there and, uh, in, we'll be hanging in, in many of our offices and are out in the, the lobby area as well. We have some really great merchandise, um, that, that really depicts a lot of the, the fights that we're dealing with, um, and, and all the different types of work that we do. Um, so it's really unique made by, um, Pennsylvania artists, Megan Bree. Uh, yep, <laughs> Annie's showing the, the card. We've got greeting cards and t-shirts and sweatshirts and um, all kinds of stuff, tote bags and uh, magnets and um, really to, to not only support the work that we're doing, but also to raise awareness for the work that we do. And, and it, they're just beautifully done um, artworks. So if you love air, <laughs> I do, clean air, if you love clean water, 
<laughs> um, you can get any of the t-shirts that, that we have here. And again, it's our constitutional right to have clean air and water. So um, you can go ahead and pick those up at our shop. And next I'm gonna introduce Jess Friss. She is one of our newest members as well of our, uh, our wonderful group here. And um, Jess comes to us, she is, um, we're sharing her. Uh, I told her yesterday I wish we could clone her. <laughs> <laughs> She's so lovely. Uh, but uh, Jess, you're working on project management, keeping us all in check. So why don't you talk a little bit about what you do here at Protect PT and some of the stuff you've been working on? Yeah, so like Julian said, I uh, have recently started. I've, I've been here for only a few months, so I'm really trying to uh, learn more about Protect PT and the work that they've been doing. Um. And I am, it's, as the, as the organization is growing, I really am hoping to help build capacity and ensure that all of the different projects and programs that uh, Protect PT is doing uh, run efficiently and smoothly and that we are growing even more so. Um, so one of the, and, and also I wanted to, to say that Protect PT does a really great job of working collaboratively with other organizations um, case in point, I am a staff share, so I work at another organization, Three Rivers Waterkeeper, um, that they collaborate with a lot. But one of the groups that Protect PT works with is the um, Oil and Gas Waste Regional Collaboration, uh, and that specifically is a monthly meeting where we want to address the impacts of, of radioactive waste created by the fracking industry. Um, and so this is a, a regional call that happens monthly with, with groups from Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio. Uh, and we all come together to talk about the different issues we have going on and how we can tackle them together and offer support and help. Um, right now we're working on a storytelling uh, project where we want to hear from people and their impacts so we can spread the word and let other people know uh, and kind of create like a face behind the story of, of who is impacted by this waste. Um, so Protect PT does a lot with that. Uh, Jillian runs the meetings and I help create the agenda and send out meeting reminders, uh, try to make efficient meetings. And then an offshoot of that is the Waste Barging Working Group. Um, that is a working group that is specifically related to, uh, yeah, the, um, fracking or the, the barging of fracking waste on our rivers. So we're doing a lot with that group as well. Um, and yeah, I just hope to ensure that we are uh, increase, increasing our, our work across the, the board and also working collaboratively and getting projects done. So if there's any uh, questions about that, please let me know. <laughs> yeah, and Jess is really good at at keeping us on track with projects. Um, just to let you know, we have so many projects going on all at the same time. So lots of things that we're juggling. Um, one of these things is uh, work around the Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill. And Jess was successful in getting, um, we, we had sent a letter to ATSDR, which is the Agency for Toxics, Toxic, Toxic Disease and Substance Registry. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Do I get all the, the, the words in there? Um, and so uh, we just talked to them last week. And one thing that, that folks it, around Ross Traver have been dealing with for a, over a decade now is this landfill. And this landfill, um, like Jess was, was talking about, um, you know, um, this, this, is, uh, this is a holding the, the toxic waste from the oil and gas industry that we've been working on. So um, this is a picture of the landfill taken by a local resident. And, um, you know, really they use, they use the, the drill cuttings um, to help cover the garbage. Um, and so residents are, are dealing with impacts to dust and debris and mud on the roads, which could or could not be oil and gas waste which could or could not be um, toxic and radioactive, we, we don't know. Um, and there aren't enough people looking into this. There aren't enough tests done. So um, one thing that we know, we do know that the air is really poor quality. And so we're doing some monitoring around there. We're talking with local residents um, and just helps us keep everything and, you know, really um, moving along at where we need to have it 
uh, move because really with so many projects going on and so many people to out reach out to, it's hard sometimes to manage all those. So we are very happy um, to have Jess for the time that we have her managing all the, all the stuff with us. Um, if you want to go ahead to the next screen, there's just another, another picture of the landfill. And last but certainly not least, <laughs> uh, one of our wonderful programs for the other side of um, the work that we do, the sustainability work that we do, is Annie Dealey. She is our, um, our community organizer for the Reimagine Turtle Creek Watershed and Airshed Communities Plus. Really long title, but um, Annie, do you want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the Reimagine effort and some of the wonderful work that you and the volunteers in the effort have been working on? Yeah, Reimagine is like a multi-partner initiative. I think that goes hand in hand with um, what Joyce was saying earlier about how great Protect PT is at, at partnering with other organizations. Um, there's quite a few, some like community-based groups, but then also um, uh, League of Women Voters and Climate Reality Project are big partners on this. Um, yeah, so Reimagine Turtle Creek, we basically take on sustainability projects that are proposed to us by community members um, within the Turtle Creek watershed, which is a long way of saying the eastern suburbs of Pittsburgh. Um, one of our projects is based on uh, reimagining buildings, uh, renewable energy, and infrastructure. And this is a project to reimagine the Monroeville Mall into a space for sustainable uh, and green building design. Uh, last summer, we went uh, to local like high schoolers and asked uh, through an essay contest how they would want to change the mall. Uh, malls in general have been a center of youth culture since they like, first boomed in the late 20th century. Um, so we wanted to make sure that the the vision that we have for the mall includes the people who are using it, right? Um, so these are like our essay contest winners. One of them talked about like smaller fixes, like introducing a recycling program and um, putting a permeable pavement in the parking lot. Um, but then the other talks about changing the mall into like a giant park and like ripping out half of it, and making it all glass windows on the outside, and um, putting a basketball course and stuff. Um, our next project is uh, we're working with um, the Monroeville Chamber of Con Sorry, this is my last slide. Um, commerce uh, to put in the moss wall. So these are like some additions of what we could do. Um, I added like biophilic design to the inside of the wall. Um, okay. Uh, Reimagine Turtle Creek also has um, education initiatives. Um, our original visioning sessions, which was like a collection of like 50. 30 to 50 community members all like saying like, this is what I want for our, our region. Um, in a, like, this is how I want to develop sustainably. Um, one of the big components was education. Uh, so we have a podcast that goes over like uh, individuals journeys to like taking care of ourselves in a sustainable way, um, making our lifestyles like more earth friendly and like a part of the earth. So a lot of them are about like veganism, but then there's also like uh, you can see these are like uh, posters for episodes. So um, there's one on art therapy, um, uh, the beauty like industry and how uh, you can take care of yourself sustainably basically. Um, yeah, the next thing we do is uh, we host hikes. So this is another way to like promote education. Um, the one on the left was a hike where we went through Boyce Park one of our county parks um, in Allegheny County and uh, uh, learned about the different plants along the, the hiking path that you could eat. Um, we, uh, this past Sunday, we actually went on a hike um, pretty close to the office uh, at Pleasant Valley Park. It was delightful. Uh, and learned about like local plants and wildlife. That's a toad that we found the other day. Um, it was not happy that we picked it up, but it was fine. Uh, yeah, so that's a way to like build community uh, around our like beautiful features of our watershed and airshed area. The other big program we have is a gardening program. It's called Reimagine Food Systems. We provide essentially everything that a household needs to start growing their own uh, produce and their own 
own yard. Um, it's all organic. Um, we source like our wood sustainably. We get our uh, seedlings from Grove Pittsburgh. Um, and that's just a picture of, of volunteers and one of our, our gardeners, uh, <laughs> that like child that's waving. Um, and yeah, that's an exciting program. This past year, we actually got fully funded from um, Pittsburgh Foundation. Uh, that being said, things are more expensive this year. So we're still doing some fundraising to get this, this program fully funded, um, fully, fully funded, I guess. Uh, but that's exciting, and we're moving dirt on Wednesday or Thursday this week, the 28th, and we need one more volunteer for the afternoon shift. So if you want to help uh, move dirt, it's actually uh, from a from AgroCycle, which is a regional compost facility. Uh, let me know. We're basically putting dirt into these um, raised bed gardens. Uh, and a, a big component of this is also education. So we have a couple of master gardeners, one from Penn State Extension, one from Phipps, um, that teach our, our neighbors how to um, grow food <laughs> and uh, do like pest control and stuff without pesticides, everything's organic. Yeah. So yeah, that's the one moving, which is on Thursday. Uh, and then our next program, we have one every month, is on herbs for brain health. So we're partnering with a stone fruit community herbalists, which is um, a really interesting, like uh, they, they operate mostly in the eastern suburbs, I believe, but they're like a uh, cohort or co-op of, of herbalists that are anti-racist and queer-led and yeah, they're going to teach us on how to use herbs and teas and stuff like that to uh, reduce um, stress, anxiety, depression. So, green help. Um, and that's this Monday. The other thing, oh, this is really exciting. Um, uh, like I said, we need more funding because supply chain is really expensive this year, um, more expensive than anticipated in my budgeting. <laughs> so we're hosting a concert, which is actually the second annual Get Down for Gardens um, at Brew Gentleman in Braddock on June 3rd. So come down, there's gonna be some folk bands and um, vegan food, and it'll be a nice way to A, celebrate community, and be um, on direct thing. This is our get back down for gardens last year, which was virtual via Facebook. That's Sweet Potato and the Hot Damn Yam Band, who's going to be playing again this year, uh, but we'll see them live. Very fitting name for a gardening program. <laughs> uh, and then I just wanted to shout out the uh, Pennsylvania Climate Convergence. I believe that's the next slide. That's something that we've all been working on. Oh, shoot. I changed the slides like while this was going, so maybe it's just not didn't make it. But um, the Pennsylvania Climate Convergence is something that a lot of our staff has been working on, and it's a way to connect to different folks um, and small groups like Protect PT throughout the state um, to uh, like share resources and um, ideas, um, and then also take on collective action uh, towards our, our state legislature. It's going to be in June. The 11th to the 13th. Yeah, and I actually just posted the link to that in the chat <clears throat> so folks can access that. And can I just say that Annie's graphics are awesome? <laughs> uh, she like excels at <laughs> great graphics and, and um, just organizing. Uh, and, you know, the fact that she has uh, this, this grant from the Pittsburgh Foundation to do the, the get down for gardens or the, the gardening program this year. Definitely. And um, the bands at get down for gardens last year were awesome. So definitely come again this year, come to her event. Cause, cause it was just really, really awesome last year. Even it, it, though it was online, it was still, it was so great. So I can't even imagine how much greater it's going to be in person. Um, so please come down to, and can we put that slide on real quick? 
again, um, just so uh, people know where to go. Yes, June 3rd, um, Brew Gentlemen, and that's on Braddock Avenue. Um, so definitely come and, um, yeah, and, and, you know, buy some tickets and, um, there'll probably be raffles and lots of lo awesome band music and some beer and just a really, really good time. So, um, next, uh, Jess, do you want to talk a little bit about managing some projects? Yeah, for sure. This was, um, just the slide that I put together to kind of talk about how I like go about managing projects, but specifically how Protect PT Alex uh, utilize different um, online resources to kind of manage projects. So, because there's so much going on, uh, so many different projects, so many different uh, like teams of people doing stuff, and sometimes we have interns doing stuff, and and uh, the board members also. Uh, love to help on our projects. So we use Notion a lot um, to kind of stay organized and I'm definitely learning uh, how to use Notion and it's really effective. Uh, we use Google Suite. Uh, like I said before, Protect PT works very collaboratively uh, and Google Suite is just perfect for that because we're able to share uh, documents and different uh, resources and work on them all together at the same time. Uh, and then we also utilize Basecamp for a lot of the different coalitions and groups that we work with. Um, and I just listed, uh, like I said before, some of the groups that we work with. So like the Waste Barging Working Group, Oil and Gas Waste Regional Collaboration. Um, we're always on brief projects, weekly petrochemical calls. Um, and then like Andy had mentioned, the Pennsylvania Climate Convergence, a lot of the staff that Protect PT sits on a lot of those uh, committees or heads them. Um, and we will definitely be at the Pennsylvania Climate Convergence, so I hope to see everyone there. Um, and then in the corner, I just have a picture of, um, since I'm a staff chair through as well, our keeper, I wanted to show that through a picture. So that's um, our boat captain on a boat, our Three Rivers boat, so yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, definitely shout out to our friends at Three Rivers Waterkeeper. And I also want to give a big, 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 big shout out to our board. Uh, we have some amazing board members. Some of them are pictured here um, in our grand opening photo. Um, and so had it off in our board, I would probably be crazy uh, this weekend. Um, they were so helpful, helping us move everything. Um, they had spouses come in. They had even staff had folks, um, you know, uh, dad, your, Jess, your dad came in. Annie, um, you had your boyfriend here um, volunteering to help out with Protect PT and our big move. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who volunteered, um, not just for this, but the, for the painting, for the cleaning. Our board chair, Lois, who's here, pictured here, she cleaned the, all the walls so we could get ready for painting. Um, and they're going to be at our grand opening of our Community Environmental Education Center, which is opening officially on May 7th from 11 to 4. Everyone should come down and eat some tacos with us, <laughs> uh, enjoy some raffles. Um, and uh, we're going to have a character artist, um, a local character artist here doing characterists uh, or um, images of folks. So I would love to get one of each of the staff members. <laughs> uh, I think that would be really great to have um, for our office and, and we could put them on the website maybe. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, and then uh, we're also going to have a band. Actually, a former board member, JJ Mason, is going to come uh, with just JJ, and he's going to play some some acoustic um, guitar for us and uh, jam out with us. So another really fun event. Uh, and we're going to have lots more fun events coming up. We're going to have film screenings and book readings. And uh, we're actually going to have a library in our environmental education center, just a, a little library. You can check out some books um, like Amity and Prosperity that Mary was talking about really kind of showed the impacts of, of fracking in Pennsylvania. Um, we actually have um, another author that I think is going to come tomorrow on our anniversary. Um, she wrote the book Black Snake, um, talking about the um, the uh, pipeline. Um, um, and we, uh, we, we just want to invite folks to come and join us. 
if you are an author, if you are, um, you know, a journalist and you're working on a project, a lot of folks reach out to us. So definitely reach out. And um, we'd love to host an event here with you. Um, we'd love to educate our community on what the work, the work that you're doing. And um, we also have lots of collaborative partners, as Jess was saying. So we invite our collaborative partners to come here and, um, yeah, and, and have these educational events in this space. Uh, we can invite the community here. Um, so it's just, it's going to be a lot of fun coming up and, and we're really excited to kind of really open this new chapter in our history. <laughs> we have grown so much since, uh, since being in my living room, <laughs> which is, which is really funny that we just started in my living room. Uh, and, uh, just, I remember the first version of the home resource guide just like spread across the floor <laughs> because we didn't have a way to put it all together, um, with a big table. <laughs> so, and then our first location where we had our first internships and now like, uh, so many possibilities. <laughs> it's very exciting. So as you can see, I'm very excited. Uh, <laughs> so um, Mary, do you want to take us out with the last couple slides? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Just give me a second to uh, scroll through all these. Um, yeah. So if you need to contact us, um, we did put a contact us slide on here. So you know, like, like I said earlier, my email is just my first name at protectpt.org. And really, we do try to keep that across the board. Um, Jess's email, as you can see, is a little bit different with being a staff share. Um, yeah, that's, just, you know, just a, a reason for, for making that email a little bit different, um, because she's also working with Three Rivers Waterkeeper. So if you need to reach out to Jess about anything, her email is a little bit different. But for the rest of us, we, we do try to keep it um, pretty, pretty simple with just um, first name. And uh, yeah, you can find all this information on the website as well. Um, and of course, you know, we can, um, I'm happy to put this in chat afterwards. Um, and then uh, if you like the Lunch and Learns, um, please subscribe. And also um, you can follow us and um, you can hit the little notification bell and that will notify you when we're releasing new videos. So that way you know, and that way um, you, can, you can find out when, when the next thing is coming up. So our next one um, is actually going to be with Three Rivers Waterkeeper in May. Um, I don't, I don't see the slide on here, but um, I believe that date it's it's somewhere end of May, last Tuesday of May. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have uh, Jess on again, and also Heather from Three Rivers Waterkeeper. So um, we're gonna be talking about water and the Clean Water Act. So if you want to tune in for that, please do. And um, yeah. Uh, you can also take our survey. We have this link here at the bottom. If you have um, suggestions on the lunch and learn, maybe there are topics you really want to, to learn more about, let us know, or you know, maybe a special guest speaker you think we should invite. Um, yeah, so thank you all so much for, for tuning in and we hope we got to any questions and uh, feel free, you know, if you are watching this later and you have a question, feel free to reach out to us. You know, we're happy to answer your questions by email or another way later. Um, so thank you all so much for tuning in and I hope you'll take your survey and that you'll join us at our open house on May 7th. Thank you all so much. Yes. And thank you to all the staff for all that you do. Um, and uh, thank you for everyone that's, that's joining us today and um, have a wonderful afternoon. We're going to actually end a little early today, which never happens. Uh, but thank you everyone. And uh, we are, we are looking forward to seeing you very soon. Take care. Bye.